Hey, what's happening gamers? It's Kwing here, and it's Rabid Season once again. Yes, those crazed bunnies are back with the fifth game in the series. Unfortunately, this game is nothing like Rabbids Go Home, and is reverted back to another minigame, Completion Set. The theme for this game is, of course, time travel. After scaring off the curator, the bunnies make the museum their base of operations, if you will. A total of six doors lie before the creatures. Housed in five of them is a mini-hub for each of the different minigames. Rabbids fans will notice a similar layout to Raving Rabbids 2 with the trip feature. Instead of opting for a variety of waggle-based minigames, Ubisoft has changed the way minigames are played. Certain wings of the museums, players will need to bounce, shoot, fly, race against the clock, and do some fishing to complete the games. Although fishing is only unlocked for Wii Motion Plus owners. After you've gained access to the museum, more modes are unlocked, like testing your knowledge, singing a cappella, and of course a Just Dance clone. Also, like with Rabbids 2, you can get costumes by beating the different minigames. Travel and Time can be played solo against AI bots, or you can play online or offline with friends. Although I did try to get K-Wife to play this game, she didn't really want to, except she was more than happy to take over the Rabbids dance feature for me. So what's wrong with this game? Well, most of my complaints have steamed from long loading screens and numerous glitches that cause the game to freeze, like this for example! Or how about this one? Yeah, not so funny, is it? What I find interesting is I'm not the only reviewer that has come across these glitches. It can happen anywhere in the game, and that's a major shame. Luckily, the game automatically saves your progress, though, so no worries about losing your save data. The load screens are a little on the long side, but if you're playing with friends, you guys can beat each other up in the dryer or sing off key to your heart's content, which is so much fun. Online play doesn't suffer from any lag that I've noticed, but it doesn't support We Speak either, so it's a guessing game as to how you communicate with the other players. Still, my biggest complaint with Rabbids Travel in Time is flying and fishing. The controls for flight are just downright awkward and takes a while to adjust especially when racing against computer-controlled opponents. Fishing is actually a mode that didn't need Wii Motion Plus to begin with. Its controls are actually the worst out of all the minigames in this set. Which I find shocking considering Red Steel 2 is among the elite of motion-controlled video games to this day. So how on earth did Ubisoft screw this one up? Casting the rabbit is unresponsive at times, yet the computer gets the perfect cast every single time, while you occasionally will get lucky. Sealing friends' fishes turns into a waggle fest, which is odd considering Ubisoft was trying to go the opposite with that. Believe it or not, this game has some redeeming qualities, some being the key word here. The same graphic style from Rabbits Go Home is applied here and features smooth animation and lots of clever level design. Music, once again, consists mainly of covers from the 70s and 80s, although they've been rabidized. Like the rest of the series, humor is still a major highlight of this game. The game's opening movie is what sets the pace for the hilarious game. And of course, the bathroom humor is even more over the top than in previous games. An example of this is the bunny enters the bathroom to create the save file and then exits with a whole roll of TP attached to their foot. <laughs> Priceless. My favorite game modes were the toilet paper races, platforming, rail shooting, and of course the Just Dance clone. Even though the rail shooting offered very limited first person shooter levels, shooting the bunnies was a blast and had me in stitches just like the past games. Gameplay was very easy to play, you just point and shoot and that's what I love. It was also nice of the developers to add little minigames to pass the time, like shooting masks and some hoops for one. Platforming was a key element in the last entry, but Ubisoft has changed things up here as well. This wing featured different minigames, which ranged from collecting beans, a Tetris-style level, or striving to be the last rabid standing. 
The toilet paper races were insanely frantic and clever at the same time. An AI bunny assists you if you're solo and is stuck to your toilet paper, forcing you guys to work as a team in order to win. To make things even more interesting, powers are placed in the level. I did get a chance to play some of these games online and it was really fun. Lastly, the dance clone was actually kind of fun, but in a rabid kind of way. What they've done differently is it's not just like the Just Dance thing. All the moves are insanely funny, and it just fits the travel and time feature so well. I mean, just seeing Maria Antoinette doing I'm a Maniac had my guts ready to burst. I mean, Ubisoft, that was awesome. Replay value is great if you have other people that want to play it with you. Rabbids in Time is meant to be experienced with friends, and without them, this game dries up faster than a fish out of water. In closing, I will admit I'm not thrilled with the return to the party game formula. Compared to the much cheaper Rabbid party games that are out there, I feel this one is missing a lot of content, and it only offers 23 minigames, which frankly isn't enough to justify purchasing this game. It's not that the game is terrible or anything like that, mind you, but it doesn't measure up to the quality of the older Rabbid party games. Heck, Rabbids 2 featured 54 minigames and is still way more fun than Travel in Time. Personally, I would strongly suggest renting this game first. After the rental, decide if the game is really going to be worth your time and if you'll have fun playing it with your friends and family. If not, there are lots of other great Wii titles perfect for this Christmas. Well, that wraps up another K-Wing review. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this review, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, and until we meet again, gamers, God bless and happy gaming.